welcome to Idea Zone with Kaleidoscope Enrichment. My name is Sandy Roberts and I am the STEM educator for Kaleidoscope. I'm also the Warren County Library System Makerspace Coordinator and the author of the big book of Maker Camp Projects. Um, so I hope that you are ready to have a bit of fun today. We're actually going to be doing some um, projects from the big book today. And today I'm calling it Musical Junk because it's all about how we can take all kinds of junk, things that we find around the house, and we can transform them into some fun musical instruments. And when we're all done, I'll have some more ideas for you so you can continue exploring and create your own orchestra from home, okay? Um, I am following along on chat, so if you have any questions as we go along, make sure that you uh, let me know, and uh, just, you know, uh, send in any kind of comments or questions as we go. So, the first project that we're going to do today is the simplest of all musical instruments that you can possibly make out of stuff from home. So let me just put my little stand here so you can see a little bit easier and get my first tray of junk. Here we go. Our first musical instrument is going to be a very simple drum. And all you need for this is something like a coffee can. I have a little coffee can here. Uh, this one is for breadcrumbs. We even got a nice big one for uh, oatmeal. Now what's fun is that if you can get a couple of different cans of different sizes, different diameters, so how wide they are as a circle, and maybe different heights, each will give you different um, sounds because the acoustics inside the can are going to vary. The way that the sound waves, okay, which travel through the particles of air, they will bounce off of the inside of your drum differently based on the size and shape of your container and also based on the type of material your container is made out of. In fact, let's see, that's the oatmeal, but it's very different from the metal of the coffee can. And if you have plastic, you'll see that that gives you yet another sound. So as you're making your drum, think about how many different drums you can put in your drum kit to make all kinds of different sounds. Now there's another way to vary how you're going to make your uh, drum sound, and that's by what you put on your drum, on the head, is what we would call it in music. Um, you can, of course, go ahead and just use the plastic cap that comes with your um, container. That's perfectly fine, but it's really fun to try different materials. For example, I have some wax paper here. This is kind of a classic um, drum material, but you can also try maybe some tin foil to see if that gives you more of a metallic sound or some plain old plastic wrap. You can try paper things like, um, you know, I've got some coffee filters here that you can use. You just want to make sure that whatever you use is thick enough that when you're tapping on your drum, you're not going to tap through your drum, right? Um, you can even try a bit of fabric or one of my personal favorites, um, and I was all out of them today, but a rubber balloon. If you have a nice big rubber balloon, maybe from a party that's kind of left over, stretching that over this is really great. So making your drum is as simple as can be. Let me show you. I'm just going to take, like I said, a piece of wax paper here. And I am just ripping my wax paper. And you're just going to stretch it right over your container like that. I've got some rubber bands. I'm just going to go ahead and attach it really well. I tend to use more than a single, single rubber band for this because you don't want it slipping and sliding on you while you're tapping. So here we go. And you can hear that's a very different sound than we had with the plastic top on it. Now what about if we swap this out and maybe try, I'm going to try not to snap rubber bands all over the, the place here. Okay, so maybe if I get rid of my wax paper and try some tin foil instead, some aluminum foil. Let's see how that changes the sound, changes the acoustics of our drum. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm just doing the same thing, stretching it over my container, rubber band to hold it in place, and here we go. Very different, right? That metallic sound is very different. Um, so I want you to kind of play with that because it's really fun to get different sounds out of your drums because each of these materials has different qualities. Now, once you've decided what type of head you like with your drum, you can go ahead and use a little bit of duct tape or masking tape to attach this nice and neatly instead of the rubber band so it doesn't slip. And then you can use some construction paper, stickers, markers, and decorate the outside of your drums to get really, really festive with them. Another fun thing to do, I want to show you this. 
this real quick, is if you put a couple of stones or grains of rice or something like that on your drum, you can actually see the sound as you watch. I'm going to zoom in for you a little bit here, if I can. But you can actually watch the sound vibrate through the head and move the little rocks. Okay, so you can try, I like to try to make them bounce. Um, so you can try that as well, which is really fun. If you have glitter or rice or, sorry, I'm kind of making a mess with my camera there, or any of those kinds of materials, you'll see that they work too. And that's a fun experiment as well. Does rice bounce differently than beans, right? Their different densities and their weights are going to make them move differently based on the vibration of your hands. So that's our first project. You make yourself a drum, you can either go the artistic route and just make them beautiful, or you can be a little more sciencey and try out different materials to get just the right sound that you want for your drum kit. Okay, I'm gonna just slide these things back over here so I can make some space for our next project. Coffee cans, collect those if you can. I keep those around all the time. Of course, now I've got a mess of cans all around me. Okay, so that's the easiest. Anyone can do a little drum, right? But our next project is probably one of my favorites because I think that it's probably the most festive of the different projects. For this, we're going to make our own very simple maraca, okay? And here's what you're going to need. You need a water bottle of some sort. I'm using a full-size water bottle, but if you have the little ones, they're, they're great for this too. They work really nicely. If you don't use disposable water bottles, and I don't tend to, um, you can use a plastic water bottle that you, you know, a reusable water bottle. They work great. Even try a metal one if you want to. Um, if you want to go really small, you can fill maybe some leftover Easter eggs um, for this project, but I like to get a nice big maraca. So I'm going to use a full-size water bottle. You're going to want a toilet paper tube for your handle. The thicker, the better, um, but we're going to cover it with duct tape so that I'll strengthen it up. Obviously, you're going to need some duct tape for decoration and to hold everything together. I've got a couple of different colors here. I think I'm going to go with the purple. I'm feeling purple today. Um, you're going to need a funnel because the neck of our bottle is a little tight there. So I'm going to need a funnel. And then last but not least, I've got some colorful beads. You don't have to use beads for this. If you happen to have maybe some lentils or beans sitting around, they'll work. I've got uh, a bit of rice. That will work just fine. Um, whatever will fit through the neck. I just think that for this project, I really like using these colorful beads because I think it just adds a lot because you can see them shake and, and just makes it really fun. Um, so here we go. Very simple to assemble. Actually, I'm going to keep my tray so I don't end up with beads all over the floor. All right. I'm going to start by taking my bottle. Make sure you've taken off the label. Make sure your bottle is dry inside. Nothing worse than a bunch of like uh, water droplets from who knows where falling, you know, rolling around in your maraca. Just going to put the funnel on top. And I'm going to add a couple of beads. Now, you don't want to fill the whole thing with beads. Okay, you want to leave lots of room for the beads to shake. That's what's going to give us the vibration that's going to make our maraca sound cool. So in they go. And I put probably a little too many beads in at once. I've got one stuck. That happens sometimes. So just add your beads. Like I said, these are just some colorful leftover um, beads I had from another project. They are really getting stuck on me today. Uh-oh. Where's my pencil? Always keep a pencil around, right? That way you can fix these kinds of problems. Try again. A couple of beads. And it's kind of up to you. You may want to play with it a little bit to decide um, how many beads sound good to you. It might be different for you than it is for anybody else, and that's okay. Here we go again. Come on, beads. Which one got stuck this time? It's these little, the little heart beads are the ones that are getting stuck, I guess, because they're such an irregular shape. But they're so cute. <laughs> All right. I think that's probably pretty good. So I've got my beads in there. I'm going to put the top back on my beads because I have learned from experience when you leave beads in an open thing, you end up with beads everywhere. So I'm going to close those so they don't go flying around. I'm just going to take my top, put that right back on. And like I said, at this point, 
point, you can be like going to town with that right away. But I like to give myself a little bit of a handle um, so it's a little bit easier. So I've just got a toilet paper tube that I'm going to put right on top there. If you prefer to use things like hot glue, you can do that if you have that and you feel safe doing that. But I find duct tape not only makes it look pretty, but does a great job of holding everything together. Now you might need scissors to tear your duct tape. That's fine. I'm, I've gotten pretty good at it. Many, many years of science and swim. If you've ever been to the Belvedere pool for science and swim, you know I use duct tape a lot for that. So I'm just going to go ahead, put on some duct tape. This doesn't have to be perfect. It's really up to you because um, you can kind of cover up a lot of a lot of the inconsistencies as you add more. So I'm just going to put a piece around this side. And there we go. Now I've got a nice handle on my maraca. That sounds pretty good, right? Now imagine if you put different types of materials in there. You might, it might sound completely different with rice. It might sound totally different with kidney beans. If you have um, some old cat toys or something like that, maybe the little bells that you can find in there, they're really fun to put in something like that. That gives it a whole different sound. And you can make a whole set of these really quickly, really easily. Use duct tape to decorate them. I like to leave kind of at least the middle portion open when I'm decorating so I can see those beads moving around because it's really fun. Um, and you can cover your whole handle and get really creative with them. Maybe put some stickers. Because they're clear bottles, this is a great time to pull out the uh, permanent markers, like the Sharpies, and color your bottle. And it gets this really cool rainbow effect. Um, so those are really simple. You can make a ton of them. Great if you're having a birthday party for someone. Um, it's a wonderful way to celebrate with your family. All right, so that is your water bottle maraca. Okay. On to the next item, just cleaning up a little bit. Now this last one is a classic, um, but it's the hardest one to make, so that's why I kind of saved it for last. Here we go. We are going to make the classic rain stick, just a mini version of our rain stick, okay? So what you need for this is a toilet, uh, not toilet paper tube, a paper towel tube. Now if you only have toilet paper tubes, not a problem, okay? You can just tape a couple of them together. In fact, if you want to make a giant rain stick, you can tape several of these together. Look around your house. You might be able to find um, uh, wrapping paper tubes and other items like that that can make great rain sticks as well. So you're going to need the tube for your rain stick. You are also going to need something um, to put to poke through your rain stick because our goal with a rain stick, well, with a maraca, we get a very kind of rhythmic sound, right? With a rain stick, we don't want that rhythm to be synchronous. We want it to be asynchronous, which means we want it to sound a little random. We want it to sound a little broken up. Often, natural sounds like the sound of rain falling tend to be a little more asynchronous. Um, and the human brain finds that relaxing because it's very different from maybe the patterns of um, music or speech or whatever that, that we have to deal with all day, especially if we're, you know, working on our classwork or doing um, office work all day. So it can be very soothing to have the asynchronous sounds of nature, and that's what a rain stick is trying to replicate. So we need something to poke through here so that when our, I'm going to use rice or lentils or beads fall through the rain stick, they are bounced around inside the rain stick and they don't all fall together. And that's going to be what accomplishes that, that asynchronous sound that we associate with rain. So I like to use um, little bamboo skewers for this. These are pretty inexpensive. They're great for growing season anyway. Um, they do have a little bit of a pokey sharp bit on the one end, but they're fantastic for this. But you do need to know that when you're cutting them, which we will need to do, it, you can do that with a pair of scissors. But you may want to, if you have them, a pair of diagonal cutters will make that a little bit easier. If you don't have bamboo skewers, think about it. Do you have drinking straws? I have these, and these are really great for this. These are little, um, like, coffee stirrers that you can use. And the nice thing about these, these are actually plastic, so they cut with the scissors really easily. Very simple to use. And again, you might find different materials give you different sounds. Um, so you can play with that a little bit. And then it's pretty easy. All you need are um, 
some way to poke holes. Sometimes your bamboo skewers are strong enough to go right through. You can also use an awl if you have one. This is basically used for like book binding and anything like that. It's got a sharp metal bit to make holes. You gotta be careful using this. You can use a screwdriver. You can use a sharp pencil. Anything that you can find that will just poke a little hole into your um, toilet paper tube or your paper towel tube. And then last but not least, you need something to put in your rain stick so that it can um, make that sound. I tend to, just with this one, I tend to like things like rice, um, but you, again, can experiment with whatever you have. My paper plate. You need a little scrap cardboard because we have to cover the ends of our tube so nothing falls out. And then last but not least, of course, a little bit of duct tape or stickers or markers to decorate your rain stick when we're all done, right? Okay, we're going to switch to the other camera so I can show you um, exactly how to build this. So, here we go. Just, I keep on moving my mat around, and not having those straight lines makes me a little crazy. I know that probably makes me a little weird, but what can you do? Alright, here's my paper plate. Here's my tube. Oh no. Here's my tube. We're rolling away on me. And I'm going to need my pencil for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by tracing my tube on my paper plate. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Just kind of trace it. And that's what I'm going to use. Oh, I did a really imperfect job. See? It's okay. And what it is is basically going to give me the circle that's going to go on the bottom of my tube. So I'm just going to cut this out. And you can see this is a paper plate I used when I was painting. So I don't want to just throw it out and reuse it. I don't want to reuse it. I like to cut a little bit big for this just in case, though my tape will help. Now you might be thinking, why can't I just put mass, you know, my, my duct tape right over the bottom? Like That would be so easy. Well, if you do that, you're going to end up with a sticky side inside your, your tube. If you get a sticky side inside your tube, everything's going to, your rice or beads are going to stick to it. And when you go turning it, they're just going to get stuck and you're not going to have much of a rain stick anymore. That won't be much fun at all. This one kind of looks like a heart. That's funny. Um, so I'm just going to cut out my circles. Good practice for the scissor skills. There we go. Now I don't feel so bad about having to toss that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of tape. Take a little bit of tape here. And one of my pieces. Okay. And just attach it over one side of my tube. Now I don't want to cover both sides right now because if I do that, I'm not going to be able to put my rice in such and side. Here we go. Go to the other side. There. Now that's sealed up really well. Okay, next step. I'm going to get my bow and my bamboo skewers. And we're going to go ahead and put some skewers in to kind of break up the movement of the rice inside. Now, how many you want to put in is totally up to you. You might decide that you want to put quite a few, or maybe you don't need that many. It's, it's really just what, th what sounds good to you, and no one else can decide that for you. Um, so, like I said, when you use the bamboo skewers, you can often poke right on through. Mine won't. Um, my paper towel tube is pretty strong. So I'm using my awl, and you'll notice I'm not holding it and sticking it through. Same deal if I was using a... Um, a screwdriver, I'm putting it on my table, okay, and I'm holding it, and I'm just pushing right through. Now, I made my hole a little bit big for my bamboo skewer, okay? That's going to happen. It's not the end of the world, because I'm going to carefully, again, watching my fingers, push through the other side, and it doesn't have to be perfect, does it, right? No. This is a great moment to use a bit of hot glue, if you have some hot glue, but you don't have to. You can just trim, 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 trim. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the, again, goggles if you're doing this, okay? Safety gear or glasses. I'm wearing my glasses. Um, so I'm just going to push that through. Oh no, I lost it. There we go. Push it through. A little hot glue would be great. If you don't have hot glue, masking tape or duct tape works really nicely. I'm just going to put a little tape there. Whoop. I keep losing this spot. This 
this is the most hard part about this, and this is why this is a nice time to use your hot glue. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to just cut on the other side again. Eye protection is a good one for this. Once you kind of get both sides taped, they can't really shift around as much, and you won't have that opportunity to kind of lose them. But let's see if I can get this just right. Let me just cut this one just a little bit more. I 
do not think I added to write that kind of code, okay? Um, so, when that book, again, is the, the big book of Maker Camp Projects, and like I said, there's step-by-step -step instructions for creating your robot drum circle in there. Um, I will also post the link so you can just take a look on your own. Before we go, if you enjoy making your own musical instruments, um, I do have more projects in my book, but I wanted to, to share a couple of books from other authors that you might enjoy with projects. One of my very favorites, this is Make Musical Instruments, uh, written by Kathy Sassari. She's written, a, uh, I think, five different books on everything from robotics to edible inventions and fabric inventions. Um, they're all really fun projects. But these, some of these are a little more complicated, okay? You might take a little more materials, but you can do all kinds of things uh, with materials that you can find pretty easily with this book. So, Make Musical Instruments by Kathy Sassari. This is a really good book. Um, you can usually find it at your local library. You can buy it online as an instant download or, you know, the paper ver version. I've gotten a lot of inspiration from this book. And then if you're someone that likes technology a little bit more, maybe you have little bits around the house or, you know, you have a micro bit or makey makey or some of those sorts of things, this book is really great. This is um, Makerspace Sound and Music Projects for All Ages, written by Marion Isaac Glen, uh, <laughs> Glen, Glendening. Sorry, I always mess it up. Um, so this one is actually in the same line as my book, the, the Maker Camp book, both by McGraw-Hill. This one you can definitely find online, uh, both electronic and paperback. But this has projects for all ages. Again, simple things like what we did here today, but they, they really take it into the technological, too. So this is a great one if you want to add some electronics to your music projects. So that's another really fun book that you can get. And again, they may very well have it uh, through your local library. So you can check that out. Um, all right. So if you ever are looking for more ideas, of course, you just want to head on over to uh, kaleidoscopeenrichment.com. Be sure to check Facebook. Be sure to check our YouTube. Every week at 4 p.m., I will be here um, with more Idea Zone. Next week, we are doing make it, uh, do it yourself, make your own weather stations. Okay, so we're going to make some barometers and thermometers and wind um, anometers. So it'll be a really fun uh, collection of projects. So make sure that you come on back next week. And if you're looking for even more, check out uh, the Warren County Library System. Facebook page because on Mondays at 2 p.m. and on Fridays at 2 p.m. I have Maker Monday and Friday Steam with lots of other projects using science and technology and our maker creativity. Um, also check out Family Maker Camp which is free, has every day tons of free online projects and, um, and great activities that you can check out. They have Mario the Maker Ma Magician, they have Code Joy with robotics, they have Steam Labs with all kinds of cool mechanical inventions, just so many different things. And I am there on a regular basis, too, as one of their hosts with all kinds of projects also from the book. Um, I hope that you had fun. I hope you go and make some music. If you do, please post it and share it. I would love to 
see that. Um, you can obviously post right here in the comments, or you can send it to me uh, through the website, okay? Well, go out there, have some fun, make something new and interesting, and make some music. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next week at 4 p.m.